Hi, this is Steve Fuller, uh, and I'm going to tell you bit by bit what my new book, Humanity 2.0, what it means to be human, past, present, and future, is about. And so let's start with the introduction. Um, as you may know, I'm a professor of sociology, and in many respects, sociology and the social sciences have been the fields that have been most clearly and mo most precisely dedicated with the idea of humanity. That is to say, a concern for all and only humans as being the subject matter and, the, and policy concern uh, that we should be focusing on. Uh, this is a development of largely from the late 18th century to the present day. But one of the things that I think we see very much uh, uh, happening today is that the salience of the human, that is to say the distinctiveness of the human as a source of value in the world, uh, is beginning to change and perhaps to a certain extent disappear. And my book in a way traces sort of the history, brings us up to date and looks toward the future with regard uh, to the nature of humanity. Uh, I should start by saying that I am very much a pro-human person. Uh, in, in earlier days, I might have been called a humanist, but now I'm closer to a transhumanist, and my book, in a way, sort of explores that possibility. But I think uh, there's a sense in which we need to return very much to the roots to begin the story. Uh, and in the introduction, I introduce a kind of, uh, a sort of di dichotomy, a division in the way we think of ourselves as human beings. On the one hand, we think of ourselves very much having an animal nature very much embedded in nature, uh, very much just one among many species. This is certainly one of the big lessons that Darwinism has taught us over the last 150 years. But on the other hand, we think of ourselves as having something that separates us and in a way makes us more privileged than the animals. Uh, and this is something that is very much found uh, in the theological traditions associated with the Bible, the Abrahamic traditions of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And there we talk about notions like consciousness, rationality, the mind, the soul, uh, as being some entity that separates us from other animals and deserves, in some sense, to be ennobled and preserved, perhaps even beyond the lifespan of our ordinary animal bodies. Now, in recent times, this kind of perspective, which I do spend uh, some time talking about in the book, is associated with transhumanism. It is associated not only with enhancing ourselves uh, genetically and through other biological means, but also associated with technological extension and perhaps even uh, transferring the parts of ourselves that we find most valuable, especially our consciousness, our mind, our rationality, and so forth, into a more durable medium. Uh, and people like Ray Kurzweil, uh, this idea of the singularity is in a way a very extreme statement of a tendency that I think is very much with us today. So we have, and this is how the book begins, by talking about this tension that exists within, within us and has existed very much uh, from the beginning, certainly from the beginning of the Judeo-Christian tradition, namely our embeddedness in our animal nature on the one hand and our capacity to transcend that nature uh, by some kind of spiritualizing means which in modern times has increasingly been associated with technology.